Howdy, Mark Serbu, gun designer, gun nut. If you somehow missed the RN50 versus C4 video, I've got it linked in the description. And now, let's take a look at the aftermath. Ah, this is pretty awesome. Um, this came from the debris field from what used to be an RN50. And you saw this in the, the C4 blow up video, but uh, we're gonna look at some features close up here. This is, this is something that uh, my buddy found out in the field after a few days. And uh, it's funny, the, th the threads are partially stripped and partially there. And I guess it was a race to see if the cap was just gonna, gonna shear the threads and go back or just blow off. And uh, I think the race was not really a tie. I think it, it blew off to the side more than it blew off straight back. But uh, anyway, the, you know, what's really interesting to me is the, this is from the chamber. Uh, this is the chamber area, obviously. And it was smooth, very smooth. And it's it's got all this texture now. Uh, and it's, it's crazy. And it's because the high explosive just put so much force on here that... <laughs> And I guess it has to do with how the pressure wave hits, but it's uh, it does something that uh, any explosives nerds out there want to comment because you know this isn't something that we ever have to deal with because you know most people don't use high explosive in their ammunition. So anyway, and the, the most interesting thing, well, one of the most interesting things is the fact that the round is still stuck in there. So I'm gonna look at my cameras really quick, and we're gonna come back and knock that out. Okay, I'm gonna knock the. I'm gonna knock the bullet out of there. Got my trusty, trusty rod here. It's just under the bore diameter of a 50 BMG. I'm hoping just the weight of the rod is enough. Maybe not. Damn. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Wow. This is cool. Okay. Well the. The nose got a little messed up. I'm gonna get back to the camera and make sure I'm in focus on that because that is cool. The nose getting all smashed up was a byproduct of me beating the shit out of it with a steel rod. But man, look at the look at the back end. It's like, hmm. Well, you know what? Maybe it got did it get a little screwed up coming out of there. Well, the bore looks okay downstream you know what I'm gonna rechamber this and put in one of Edwin's guns and uh, see if he notices just kidding um, but anyway yeah it's just all just shredded back there um, it's uh, that's really interesting never never seen a projectile like that but you know then again never never sent one down a bore with C4 behind it but it is really interesting too that it only made it about uh, eight or nine inches down the barrel um, because you know the thing's ripping apart and dumping all the pressure out uh, but you you would have thought that from the high explosive <laughs> the, the initial momentum of the blast given to it by the blast would have been enough to keep it going but you know it takes a fair amount of force to to swedge a piece of steel through a bore because it is slightly oversized but man that is that is wild now, first and foremost, I want to go over this little little doohickey. We call this a spring block. It just it it has the spring for the uh, the takedown lever. Takedown lever spring uh, goes right here. And this, when the the upper comes down and you lock it in place, it sits against here. So what's really interesting to me is it looks like it's knurled, and this is not a knurled part. Uh, and what happened is the breech cap has knurling on it and the explosion made it emboss itself onto here and that's pretty neat. <laughs> so embossed knurling from the breech cap from high explosive. Yeah, so this is, yeah, you can see it got squashed down pretty hard. And of course the little breech or the, the little lever, the locking lever is all messed up. Here's uh, here is the, uh, the barrel shroud we call it, kind of hand guard barrel shroud. It kind of it has it has both parts actually, and yeah, and you know it's interesting. It's welded right here. Yes, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I'm gonna say that word many many times. In fact, it could it could be a drinking game. Every time I say interesting, have a shot or 
drink a beer. Um, but yeah, the, the shroud, uh, the, the weld line, yeah, you can see it right there actually. You see the weld line? So that's what welds the barrel shroud to the handguard. And this is the only piece of it. It's got a little bit of thread there because that's what the barrel is threaded to. And, and of course it's the same thread that the breech cap threads to, but yeah, completely obliterated. And that's nice alloy steel. And this is where the, the lug went. And here's the lug. Oh yeah, look at that, like a puzzle. So that all blew to shit. But this thing is super hard, case hardened steel, so it's it's pretty strong. It, uh, it actually still looks fine. In fact, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fix Edwin's gun with this. Uh, might as well, right? Just kidding. And of course, here's the receiver. And what's interesting to me about this is the the shape of it. How you know, I, I'd love to see high speed from all angles on this when it blew because this apparently it, it spread out quite a bit and then it sheared the screws off and and took off. But it bent quite a bit first, and then this side it bent a little bit, but the screws are still there. They're still fine. Uh, in fact, God, if I get really lucky, there should be a, should be a wrench around here that fits it. Yeah, look at that. That's funny. I'm holding three things at once, like my little granddaughter. She picks up these little little things. You got to have if there's like four of an object, she has to grab all four at the same time. Anyway, yeah. So this this side's totally fine. In fact, I could probably bend that back and use it on Edward now. Uh, but here you go, the uh, the safety ears, uh, these lugs, they're, uh, they both sheared a little bit, but they didn't go anywhere, and it's because the cap probably launched more sideways than rearward. Uh, and you see they've got a good, uh, good bit of brass peppering on them. That brass just must have vaporized and coated a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's... That's toast. Now th this is actually yeah, it's almost still a good part, except it was a it was a kind of a factory second to begin with, so I don't know what was wrong with it. And this, uh, you got to see this thing bend down in the frame by frame of the explosion, and you saw it make take that really odd shape. And of course, it didn't come back from it because it deformed and overstressed it, and that's that. And uh, here's the, the hammer cocking back. It cocked back and. God knows, I guess it, you can see that the, the hammer pin, it's no longer straight, it kind of bows, and that's probably why the springs went on by, because that's not normal position for an AR hammer spring. Uh, and this was a defective part, this is why it was used in the, in the experiment gun. Uh, somehow the detent spring hole got screwed up and there's a, there's a little piece of drill bit in there somewhere, so this was not to be used on a gun. Interesting, interesting. Uh, drink two drinks. All right, well, that's it, folks. Um, yeah, there's some really, uh, really cool stuff to be seen. I mean, cool and, and hellacious and scary also. But, uh, yeah, this is really neat to me how, yeah, just look how, why is it this pattern, you know? The pattern of, of how this thing broke. It just, I, I don't get it. Um, same with, I, I noticed on here somewhere, there, it almost looks like they're layers. This, this kind of, it looks like wood almost. It's just just insane, the, the damage. Yeah, this, this looks more like wood than steel. I've never seen this happen. But, you know, then again, I, I don't, don't play with uh, high explosive loaded rounds, so. Yeah. And yeah, the brass um, plated a little bit. Uh, and it's, I, I bet that's just completely vaporized. But I don't know how, how strong it is on there. It's, it doesn't, I mean, it's not plating by the normal definition of plating, but it's, uh, you know, it's like a co coining again. When you coin, you take two dissimilar metals, you put enough force on them, and they fuse together. So that's probably what we're looking at here. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's definitely there. It's not, it's not going away with a wire brush so that's yeah, kind of nice looking <laughs> yeah that's just just crazy stuff huh all right folks well that's it um 
Don't get to see this shit every day. Well, thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate you as always. If you've got any explosive smarty pants friends who want to drop by and comment, I'd appreciate that. Have a good one, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>